Now, Singapore is trying out new technology to make it safer to clean up chemical spills. Robots and long-range detectors were tested out during a joint emergency exercise between Singapore and Malaysia. The exercise is held biennially on the Tuas Checkpoint Bridge, where large amounts of chemicals move across the borders almost daily. Risha Matthew finds out more. For this simulation, concentrated sodium hydroxide spilled onto the Tuas second link following a collision. The impact also released a large amount of ammonia gas. In such a situation, sending officers down for an evaluation could be hazardous for them. One robot could be of help. This robotic dog is the first line of assessment for the officers here as it helps to determine the level of contamination in the air. What it does is it helps officers to remotely monitor the situation, which ensures officers are not unnecessarily exposed to hazardous gas. At the same time, ample information is provided to ensure and determine the hazard zones. With the riskier zones identified early, officers can don the right equipment when entering them. For example, these officers will have a full suit with oxygen tanks ready. This joint chemical spill exercise has enabled Singapore and Malaysia agencies to further strengthen our cooperation on the environment. This exercise is part of a broader set of collaboration that also includes joint regular water quality monitoring along the streets of Johor as well as workshops to exchange ideas and share expertise. Also used in the exercise is this long-range detector vehicle deployed by the Malaysian Fire and Rescue Department. Its infrared gas imaging systems can detect chemicals from a long distance. This can speed up evacuations should a chemical spill occur during peak period. A total of 15 agencies and companies from both countries were involved in the exercise. To date, no chemical spills have occurred along the Trois second link, but both sides agree that having such exercises will ensure readiness and effective equipment in the event of an emergency. An estimated 150,000 tonnes of hazardous chemicals are being transported across the Tuas second link each year. Here's a look at some common ones. Sulfuric acid is mainly used to produce phosphate fertilizers. It is also used to make sulfate salts, a component in dishwashing detergents and personal care items like shampoos. Hydrochloric acid removes rust and other impurities from metal surfaces. It is also commonly found in canned food to help extend their shelf life. Sodium hydroxide can break down wood into pulp, which can eventually be used to make paper. It is also a common ingredient in drain and oven cleaners. Anhydrous ammonia is used to make fertilizers and household cleaning products. The liquefied gas is also found in soldering machines to manufacture jewelry. Now, these chemicals are corrosive and can cause severe burns to the skin and eyes. Fires or explosions can also happen when they react with other chemicals. Inhaling the chemical fumes may lead to breathing di difficulties and even permanent lung damage. And for more, we are now joined by Dr. Christopher To, Associate Faculty at the St. Paul University of Social Sciences. Uh, Dr. To, welcome to the program. First of all, what sort of preventive measures uh, do companies usually practice to ensure these chemicals are contained during transportation? Good evening, Shahida. First and foremost, to prevent chemical leaks and spills during transportation, Companies use a multifaceted approach, and that includes robust packaging, secure loading, clear labeling of the uh, chemicals that is being transported. They also have some spill containment measures put in place and comprehensive training in this aspect. This includes using appropriate packaging materials, securing the containers with the uh, spill containment measures like trays or liners, and labeling packages with has, has hazard information and identification numbers. Uh, paint us a picture, Dr. Cho. How complex is it to clean up a chemical spill? Cleaning up chemical uh, spills can be very difficult. 
because it requires specialized knowledge and equipment. And different techniques are needed for different types of chemicals. So, for example, this difficulty will depend on factors such as the chemical's hazard level, spill volume and extent of the spill, and the environment that is being affected by this spill. So, for hazardous materials, we have to consider, for example, is it corrosive, flammable, or even toxic? Just to give an example. So, as you said, you know, different chemicals require different responses. So, what sort of assessments is carried out to guide the decision uh, made by the different teams? So, to, um, to actually address this uh, aspect, companies have put in place a specialized training for the uh, personnel that is involved in handling this spill, if there is ever a spill that happens in real life. So um, they have to undergo a, uh, a structured course whereby they are trained to handle these hazardous materials and they are subjected to even uh, a test in the process of certifying that they are fit to carry out this procedure of handling the spill. So we, we run biannual um, drills under very controlled conditions, Dr. To, but how prepared or how good are our capabilities to react quickly in the event of an actual incident? In my opinion, uh, these biannual exercises under controlled scenarios actually helps to enhance Singapore response capabilities the actual speed and effectiveness in a real-world situation. For example, Singapore has actually invested in building expertise and response mechanisms. But the ultimate measure of success is how well these systems perform during an actual crisis in such an example. So, for example, um, from these exercises, the um, biannual exercise with uh, Malaysia, we can actually obtain expertise and exchange our viewpoints from this exercise. And, and if you could maybe perhaps um, give us some um, examples of key takeaways from past incidents that uh, truly tested our readiness in, in some ways or another. So, um, for example, if such a situation do happen, like uh, for instance, let's say we have a, uh, a shell um, refinery explosion that encompass um, hazardous materials like for instance the crude oil spilling out onto the environment, we will have to immediately um, respond to that incident that is happening. And in my opinion, Singapore has invested a huge amount. Uh, for example, our Singapore Civil Defence Force, especially the uh, HASMAT team, is perfectly placed with the uh, right knowledge and skills to handle such an incident if it ever happens. Right. We, we've heard about some of the health impacts uh, during a chemical spill, Dr. Toe, but what kind of environmental damage can it also cause? In terms of environmental damage, we are talking about uh, air pollution, water contamination, soil contamination, and even harm to the marine life. Mm -hmm. So, for example, chemical spills can actually pollute both the surface, including the uh, uh, water at the surface and groundwater. And this could actually impact our drinking water sources and aquatic ecosystems, just to give an example. All right, Dr. Toh, thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. Uh, that was Dr. Christopher Toh from the Singapore University of Social Sciences. Oh, wow.